It is Friday, August 21st, 2020, and it's 1018 a.m. Central Standard Time. And it's time to read 2 Samuel chapter 21. But first, I want to say a prayer. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirits of darkness that are in this place, that are anywhere around me. In the name of Jesus, get away. Get out. Get off of my TV, get out of my computer, get off of this phone, get out of my windows, get out of my doors, get out. And I'm not kidding, in the name of Jesus, you have no authority here. I am covered by the blood of Jesus. And you're starting to piss me off. Okay, now with that said... Look, you have to take authority over demons or they will take authority over you. And it's not a one-time thing. You can't just tell them one time to go away and they're going to stay away. I believe that my friend Henry knows this. Okay? And you can't just be all pussyfooty. Oh, you know, devil, leave. I command you to leave. No. You have to use the same sort of tactics that they use against you. Which is, dem you know, I'm not saying that I use demonic tactics. I use the authority that I have in Jesus Christ to get them away from me. And the demonic oppression and attacks are so severe right now. They are massive. And you know what? The Lord, uh, the Holy Ghost just shared with me that yesterday... When I was swimming, I was excited to meet people because I am so lonely for fellowship with people. So people came, but they weren't good people. Even the ones who at first I thought were good, they're a bunch of heathen, demon, Jezebel, liars, just Fake, fake pe people. And I appreciate the Lord giving me that discernment. But see, what the devil does is he uses your weaknesses. He uses the fact that I'm so lonely for fellowship to bring people, anybody that would show me the least bit of attention to get them to deceive me. That's what the devil does. And I say, screw you, devil. Get out. Stay out. And I believe, I believe that once this, once this butterfly, once this angel, once this angel is, I have made my way out of this cocoon, and I and I earn my wings, that I am going to be a demon fighting. Woo! I'm gonna be. I'm going to be in the Lord's army, I tell you what. Put me on the front lines. I want to come face to face with the devil. I'm not afraid of him. I want that sucker to show his face. I want him to stop being invisible. I want him to stop trying to come to me through people. I want him to show his filthy face. I admit, because it is getting... Jesus is coming soon, people. He is coming soon. And I believe, I hope, I hope that I am able to do what the Lord showed me on September the 4th, 2007, when the Lord showed me what he has a future, he has plans for me to usher in his kingdom. I believe and I have faith that that's true. I wasn't sure exactly how it was going to go and I've gone through over all these years. It's been 13 years now. Over these 13 years, I've gone through all kinds of scenarios trying to figure out how in the flesh I could do any of it. But I realize now that none of it's going to be in the flesh. It is all going to be spiritual. And the Lord has been building me spiritually. And I'm sure that's why nobody on this demonic Google YouTube platform watches my videos except for one man 
occasionally, maybe once every 20 or 25 videos, a young, a, a, a lady named Bridget Blanton, uh, she watches one of my videos and makes a comment, a really nice comment, you know, she makes, she made a comment about how that she feels like that, that my, that my tireless effort to read the word is, is going to be a, it's going to be a, a, a it, it's going to grow because there's going to be a famine in the word. And I hope that she's right. But you know what? Not even she, not even she watches my videos. Nobody watches my videos. You can see it on the analytics. Nobody watches my videos. Okay? And I mean, who could blame you? Nobody wants to hear it. But one day there's going to be a famine and everybody's going to want to hear it. But I can tell you right now, the devil is real, and he is after you. If you're an atheist, if you're, say, he doesn't mess with you. He doesn't bother with you at all. He bothers with people like me and with people like Henry. Keep that armor on, Henry. Okay. 2 Samuel chapter 21. Then there was a famine in the days of David three years, year after year, and David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the, rem but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. And this right here, you may tell you something. This is why you do not, I, I don't care whether it's the Old Testament or the New Testament. This is why you do not have children with people you are unequally yoked with. They will be cursed. It says it in the Bible. It says it in the Old Testament. It says it in the New Testament. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That my son's father is a Christian. Because otherwise, my son would be cursed. Just like my brother's children, my brother's children are cursed. And unless you come to Jesus, you know, and I don't even know if that, I, honest to God, I don't even know if that will work. I believe that many are called and few are chosen, just like it says, just like Jesus says, straight is the gate and narrow is the way. And those, and those who find the Lord, they are meant to find the Lord. Just going out to every Tom, Dick, and Harry in the world, it doesn't matter. Because now God, he spread his people all around the world. So there are people who are hungry for the word of God on every continent of this world, but they're not all intended to receive it. So trying to bring everybody to Jesus is pointless. It ain't going to happen. God doesn't want that riffraff in his kingdom. He doesn't want that evil. I'm telling you. I'm starting to get, I'm starting to get this crazy discernment going on. And I'm telling you, some people are just not worth the effort. And I know that doesn't sound very Christian and you can, whatever. But nobody watches these videos anyway, so what does it matter what anybody thinks? But I can tell you, many are called, few are chosen. Wherefore David said unto the Gideonites, What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver nor gold of Saul nor of his house, neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say that will I do for you? And they answered the king, the man that consumed us and that devised that and that devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coasts of Israel. Let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the son of Gibeah of Saul, 
whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan and the son of Saul. But the king took the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah, whom she bare unto Saul, Armani, and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Mishal, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Meholothite. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged him in the hill before the Lord. And they fell all seven together and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the days in the beginning of the barley harvest. And Rizpah, the daughter of Ai, took sackcloth and spread it, uh, spread it for her upon the rock from the beginning of the harvest until water dropped upon them out of heaven and suffered neither the birds of the air to rest on them by day nor the beast of the field by night. And it was told David what Rizpah, the daughter of Ai, the concubine of Saul, had done. And David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, from the men of Jebesh Gilead, which had stolen them from the streets of Bethshan, where the Philistines had hanged them, where the Philistines had slain Saul and Gilboa. And he brought up from thence the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, and they gathered the bones of them that were hanged. And the bones of Saul and Jonathan, his son, buried they in the country of Benjamin in Zela, in the sepulcher of Kish, his father. And they performed all that the king commanded. And after that, God was entreated for the land. Moreover, the Philistines had, had yet war against with Israel again with Israel and David went down and his servants with him and fought against the Philistines and David waxed faint and Ishbibinob which was of the sons of the giant the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels in brass in weight he being girded with a new sword thought to have slain David but Abishai the son of Zerai secured him and smote the Philistines and killed him. Then the men of David swear unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou, that thou quench not the light of Israel. And it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sebicha the, the Hushathite slew Saph, which was the sons of the giant. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines where Elhanan, the son of, Ger don't, I'm not even going to try to say that, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was yet a battle in Gath where a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. See? Evil, wicked, freakish, mongoloid people. And when he defiled, when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimea, the brother of David, slew him. These four were born to the giant in Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Hallelujah.